Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Bradley, back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today, folks, I pulled off something I didn't think I could. I basically freaking called a friend of a friend that knows a man by the name of Eric. And I said, Eric, I know you don't need cash, but I will pay you a large sum of money if I can get a 15-minute conversation with your papa, Donald J. And this dude pulled it off, and I can't believe it. Mr. Trump, thank you for coming in, Mr. President. Brad, I'm so excited to be here, and I really love your facility. It's absolutely fantastic. It's really incredible. Why are you so far away from me, you know? Well, we're social distancing. Oh, that's great. You know, it's interesting because uh, Melania practically invented social distancing. Well, I can tell that... Um, you know, you're busy, obviously. With very, this. very busy. We're doing an absolutely tremendous job. I'm making everyone look good and no one's thanking me. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. You know, I make everyone look good and everyone says negative things about me. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Well, why do you think they do that? I don't know. I think it's a lot of jealousy. It's a lot of jealousy. <laughs> you know, I'm absolutely the greatest president in the history of presidents, other than Lincoln. You know, I'll give him credit. By the way, did you know that he was a Republican? Did you know that? Did you, No one talks about that. No one talks about that. But I do. That's why I sat in front of him for my town hall with Fox, F-O-X. I love Fox. Everyone else is crap. Everyone else is crap. Fake news. Fake news. A lot of fake news. It's sad. I have to tell you. No one's getting the real truth. And now Twitter. Twitter's fact-checking. Really? Twitter's fact-checking me? Terrible. I'm their biggest. Number one on Twitter. Number one. Number one on Facebook, too. But, you know, no one talks about that either. It's really sad. It's really great to be here. I love Las Vegas. <laughs> By the way, as you probably know, I'm looking at it right now. My tremendous Trump Tower. Right on the strip. And remember, if it's not a Trump hotel, it's a dump hotel. Right, Brad? Right, Brad? Hey, so let, out of curiosity, why why do why do some people not like the job you're doing? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I've you know, you know, Bernie was talking about giving everyone money. I actually did it. All those people should be overjoyed. They should be overjoyed. Not only did I give, I gave them much more than they ever would have gotten from him. We're doing great. The economy was absolutely the greatest economy until the Wang Chung Kung Flu came through and ruined everything. But that's okay. It's okay because we're reopening everything and i know here in las vegas here in las vegas and i love this town i love this town we should build a wall around las vegas and make laughlin pay for it because that place is a shithole i have to tell you what a dump laughlin is they'd burn that town down if it didn't have a river <laughs> oh my god so um obviously my my guest folks is not the real donner donald j trump and that is his, that is his Instagram, the real Donald Trump. I believe. Yeah, Instead, it. folks, we've got someone that's just as fucking funny as the real Donald Trump, John D. Domenico. What's cracking? How you? are you? Well, dude, I thanks appreciate- for having me on, folks. If you guys don't know who he is, and, and you check on Instagram, like he's had one or two or three or four of his videos go massively viral. In the millions, the millions, many, many millions. I have to tell you, millions of many, many people, many, many people are watching these videos. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's usually the end that sounds like, like you know, it all sounds like Trump, but it's like when you get to the ends, like that, <laughs> that's that's where it's like, fuck, is this Trump? <laughs> It's like I'm I'm excellent, I'm good, I'm good. I don't even know how you do right, it. Right, it just kind of trails off. It's sad, <laughs> sad. No one else does it. No one else does, not does it that well. That Alec Baldwin, he's horrible. Is he horrible? That guy's terrible. I don't even know why he's alive. Yeah, he doesn't fucking do a good one. Does a terrible job. And that's a horrible <laughs> show. What a crap show, SNL is. You know, I've saved that show like nine times. Nine times I've been on highest ratings. So Really, John D. Domenico, <clears throat> folks, 
is an Emmy-nominated actor, writer, comedian, and impersonator currently best known for his award-winning <laughs> Donald Trump impersonation and winner of the Best of Las Vegas. In other words... 2019. In other words, a dude that's highly in demand for mainly his Donald Trump uh, impersonation, which that's why I reached out to you. I seen Man. that some bitch. I'm surprised old Celentano knew you. Of yeah, course, we've we've been <clears throat> together. Of course, we always tell, we always say that he's, uh, you know, the governor. He knows everybody. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's so a I'm, small town. The enter entertainment community here in Las Vegas is incredible. Yeah, but when, I, when I, I didn't know you were here, I saw it, and I'm laughing at it for some reason or another. And I shared it, of course, like everybody else. It was funny as hell. Like a lot of my big the extremely negative one, that one, or. I think it, I don't think it was negative. I think well, no, the one where I said I and I took my Corona test and it was incredibly negative, yeah. extremely negative. Yeah. It was so negative, it was positive. <laughs> and then Trump said, "I said two months two months ago I released that," and then Trump basically said the same thing to the day. Dude, it was I, an incredible I, I, test. No one tests the way I test. I mean, there's other people testing, but no one's close to me. Nobody. Ah, uh, that one. I, I thought it was longer though. I thought it was like eight minutes. No, no, no. I I don't think it. I kept it pretty tight. I think it was like two and a half, maybe. Because you want to get everything on Twitter. Because if it can take off on Twitter, you know, it gets a lot of traction. Well, Twitter is that where it took off? Oh no, no, it did, all the platforms, all yeah, the platforms. Yeah, because I was going to say kind of took off. But I, what, I thought uh, I saw it on Instagram. I had people from Croatia. I have. I'm on WhatsApp, which I'm sure you're on sure. for your European, your European friends. Dude, not only am I on WhatsApp, I'm on better than anybody. <laughs> no one WhatsApps, and I'm not. I and WhatsApp. I'm not trying to do Trump. I'm trying to do mod. <laughs> Mod from the 70s? Whoever. <laughs> I'm just mod. I had people sending it back to me from Israel and Croatia and all that. I was like, holy cow, this is incredible. That was taking off. It's really gratifying that you create something and it comes back to you. But before this, before all that, you were traveling around being a Trump impersonator. Now, people that are getting the video, if you guys want to see a video, you go to YouTube. We drop bombs there. And then we also... Uh, obviously Spotify, iTunes, but if it's audio, you can't see this dude. Dude looks nothing like Trump, but when he gets in his freaking get up, dude, you look fucking like Trump yeah, too. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so how do you get it to, how do you get that going? Well, for, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an extreme impersonator because I was trained as an actor and I did a lot of theater. So when I was... Would you say thespian? Thespian, I wish. Um, but yeah, I, I love theater and I love live theater and I love performing and I'm kind of a hybrid because I've done stand-up comedy and theater and live performances. But when I do it, I want to I want to create the illusion, whatever character I'm playing, that it... I don't want to... I don't want anything pulling you out of the illusion, I don't want anything pulling you out of the performance. So with with Austin Powers, it's the teeth and real prescription glasses and a human hair wig and You kept the glasses. To, yeah. <laughs> I actually still have them. Do uh, I make you home? Do I, baby? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So we shag now or shag later. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you like uh, Mike? What's his name? Oh, Mike Myers. Mike yeah, I Myers. think he's a genius. Yeah, like he's everybody. truly a genius. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of people say that, but if you think about the amount of words and phrases he has put into the American lexicon, it, it's like it's unparalleled. And you go back to Wayne's world. All right, excellent. Hi, I'm Wayne Campbell from Royal, Royal Illinois. Excellent. Yeah, you, you kind you kind of got the Mike Myers. Mouth, yeah, because I've got the same round face, and we're the same age. And um, but he's he's just done so many amazing things. And when the Austin Powers films came out, like so many of those phrases are just now part of our you know everyday life, it's amazing. So, you, you were traveling around doing that? Oh, yeah, I was on the road. I've been, I've been performing on the road either like you know since about about 24 years old i've been a working actor comedian where'd um, you grow up i grew up in philadelphia and i always wanted to work in new york because new york was not that far from philly but i ended up working kind of all over philadelphia the poconos atlantic city new york city it was just a great area to live in and perform in 
And then nine years ago, I moved here because I was spending so much time on the road, about anywhere from 25 to 30 weeks a year performing on the road. I was like, I could live anywhere. Why am I living where it's freezing? Yeah, you know, I always wondered that. Yeah. So, and taxes. And taxes and just people jammed in on top of each people, other. People killing each other. Yeah. When I first went to New York City, it was a buddy of mine's uncle lived there. Ended up, you know, real close friends of mine. He was my best, one of my best friends growing up in this little time period. He says, "Let's go to New York." We didn't have any money, so we rode the bus. Oh boy! Like, dude, I'm telling you, we rode a bus from fucking Eugene, Oregon, all the way to New York City. Oh my, jeez! I'm telling you, dude, it, it, it. I did some impersonations along the way. <laughs> like it, that bus trip was so hilarious. I, I, I still remember so many parts of it. One of them, I did the sound of an old man. I won't even do it because it's so loud, the mic won't pick it up. Oh, okay. It'll just distort the shit out right. of everything. But his name's Jim, and he used to be a real dude that we know, and he'd always go like this. And like he had a daughter named Dorothy, and she was like 70. So that told you how old Jim Jeez. was. And Jim had a smashed face and no teeth, and he'd just look over here, and he chewed Copenhagen. And then he'd want Dorothy to go get the Copenhagen all the time and then pick up some Oreos. And then he'd bitch. Everything was everything was <laughs> a, a com great character. Dude, he's a great character. Like, you could master it and make yeah. it fucking famous because, dude, this guy's funny. Like, every, yeah, everything. Oh, no, much louder. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it in a moment. But Push I got to get I have to because he's just so loud. And not only that... Um, his whole demeanor, even if he liked you, w sounded like a put down. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I know, guys, like, like, like he was like everything was was pissed, uh, unless it was Dorothy going to get a Copenhagen. But he still sounded irritated. But he sounded loud, and his face was all over here, and he'd be like, "God damn kids!" <laughs> you know, uh, "God damn kids eating all the groceries." Goddamn Dorothy needs to go get some more Copenhagen. So it was like this pronounced fucking character, dude. And 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 I'm we're pulling out of like fucking Twin Rivers or somewhere and fucking out of the blue. And we were laughing this whole time and we're in the middle of nowhere and we're pulling out. And it was a small bus stop and a lot of people got off. And I said, hold it! <laughs> the fucking bus. I, I basically said I left my wife. Um, in, in wherever we were, it was a funny name in that voice. And the bus slammed on its brakes and came to a stop thinking it just left my wife and fucking antlers or wherever we were. Anyway, that antlers. was a long, that was a long story to say nothing, but that, that bus ride was to New York. I got there first That's a long bus ride. Yeah. But first thing we get off the bus at the Greyhound bus station. I forget where we were. What year is this? Just This, to this is there. probably 19... Let's say 89 or 90. 89, I would say. Maybe even 88. But as soon as we got there, I walk out and this dude runs by me and this other dude runs by me, tackles his ass and beats the shit out of him right on the street. And everyone just kept walking by. Yep. Like, Welcome like, to New York. Yeah, like nothing's happening. And this guy's just sitting there laying on this dude's freaking chest, pounding him in the face. And, and, and people are walking around them. And I'm like, holy shit. So that was my first. Well, yeah, welcome. not my problem. <laughs> yeah, well, that was. <laughs> Gotta like, get to work. I was like, welcome to New York. So I'm already yeah. scared. Big city. Never been there. See this. Go up. That's when it was actually getting better. In the early, late 70s, early 80s, I was going up there for auditions. It was bad. It was bad. Well, I had to get out of there because, like, everything was straight up. I, you know, if I wanted to wear a nice, like, I had this gold gym jacket that I got. And it was, believe it or not, Gold's Gym, you know, yellow and red, leather, custom made, Jeffrey Hamilton. It was like, fuck, this thing's sweet. I thought it was, you know. So were my parachute pants. No, I never went there. But ultimately, a ward on a fucking thing, damn near got mugged. Yeah. So how would you, how would you like survive in fucking New York? It's you just, you just, you have to have the passion and the desire. And you to were from there. Philly. Yeah, I was from Philly's Philly. like a clean New York. Oh, no. Philly was just as bad and probably was bad or longer. It took longer for Philadelphia to turn around. Sh Philadelphia is a dark, it's a dark place. Chicago's it's, a clean New York. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Philadelphia is just, it's a tougher, it's a really tough town. It's a, you know, it's a very blue collar town. Yeah, so I'm trying to picture you back 
After high school? Yeah. Well, first of all, did you graduate? I graduated high school, went to East Stroudsburg University in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, then transferred to, to Temple uh, to, to my... I had decided to do speech communications as opposed to theater or acting or anything like that. That way, if I got out of school, I could actually get a job. <laughs> well, what did you think you were going to be? I knew I was going to be an actor. So you knew that? Yeah, I knew I was going to be an actor. Why go writer. to college then? Because I wasn't that um, smart in the sense of how to write, how to put things together. I had a lot of learning disabilities along with the speech impediment that I had talked what? about. So it took me a long time to develop as I was always tested very high verbally. I just couldn't write. It took me a long time to figure out. It, basically, it was dyslexia. So there were little things I had to get over and I needed that time in college to kind of figure out how to learn. And once I cracked the code on how I learn, things moved a little faster. Do you know what a dyslexic insomniac atheist does all night? Pray to do a dog or something. Yeah, they, they stay awake wondering if there's really a dog. Right. <laughs> Trying to mix the letters up. Only smart people will get that one. <laughs> So, so you knew early you were going to be an actor. Yeah, that's all I really wanted to now, do. Now, since then till now, is is the Trump the biggest fame you found? Yeah, I would. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so, and it was a right place, right time. I, you know, Austin Powers obviously wasn't my creation. It's Mike Myers. I just happened to be doing that character, and I was getting a lot of work doing it. And People Magazine did a nice little story on me. That was. You wore the and wig and everything. Girl. Full thing. Yeah, the full thing. And Did when you, I'm in the makeup, I really look a lot like him because yeah, of the were structure doing, of my face. And, not, well, and your teeth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like like when you were doing that thing, and you didn't have the big uh, no, uh, I put yellow the, ones. But I, I have a teeth. I have a set that clips in. I'm talking about the real Mike Myers. Yeah. Like when you see him talk on Saturday Night Live without the teeth. It, like when you were doing your mannerisms. Oh, and, yeah. I could see him. Yeah. Like, dude, and, and, and like Caliendo. You know, he'll do something and I'll see the character. When you do Trump, I see Trump. Right. So is it like. So it's a lot of fake. Yeah. It's the, the, and your hands. Right. It's a lot of the. All the, the gestures. Different, all the different components. You know, like Dr. <laughs> Phil. You know, hey, what were you thinking? You know, he's got that thing where he kind of puts his brain towards you and his forehead. And, you know, so you're always looking for that physicality along with the voice because that's the performance element of it. But now you're but now you're an impressionist, not an actor. Right. Well, well, you're, even, though, even though that's a definable thing. Yeah. But for me, I'm an, you know, I'm an actor. I, I don't even like those terms <laughs> because as I've done this, I'm an actor playing a character. That's the way I approach all this stuff. If I were an actor, I would say I was a reactor. Right. But if you're reacting, if you're on stage by yourself for 30 minutes as a character, that's not reacting. That is, you are acting, and I am on the offensive on stage. I wouldn't want to be by myself, though. Oh, it's that's the hardest part. I like, you know, it's one of the, I got into acting to be like with people and rehearse and do a show, and all I do is work by myself. All I, I travel by myself, I write by myself, I perform by myself. It's the total still? antithesis of what I had planned on. But this is what you do still. And now you do cameos for people. So, folks, if anybody's listening and you guys want the funniest fucking cameo from Trump to be sent to someone who doesn't like Trump, someone who's having a birthday that loves Trump, you know, I, I'm going to... Graduations, gonna, dude, Father's Day. I'm going to send one to my daughter. She hates Trump. Like, dude, Why? Trump, I love her. I think she's tremendous. She's a great kid. Great kid. <laughs> because, why? Because, uh, you know, not to be mean, but she's not, you know, the smartest in the bunch, I think. <laughs> not the sharpest tool in well, the Well, no, and, and I hope she listens to this because, again, like, it's, it's so close-minded about Trump. Like, again, I was not, I'm not, and, and, and probably will never be a, a quote unquote Trump fan. Like, again, I, I think Donald Trump's fucking funny. The reason I'm happy he won for president, because I didn't vote, because I, I, I get into a whole thing, but your vote don't fucking count, dude. The fucking electoral college, whoever gets those votes, that's who fucking picks our president. Right. This is all an illusion that our votes actually get tallied up. Okay. They don't get fucking tallied up, idiot. We elect somebody and they get the fucking vote. Do you guys know that? You know yeah, that. Yeah. I spent a year as an intern for United States Senator. But when so. I started realizing that, I'm like, what the fuck am I voting for? This is just a show. Hey, everybody, go pick your president. 
and then fucking everyone goes and votes like dumb fucks. And in reality, the electoral college picks our fucking president. Right. So, and, and I, I thought, no, 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 they have to do what the constituents say. Wrong. Right. Or as Trump would say, wrong. Sorry, not going to happen. Have you seen all of the Q footage that's out there? Not all of it. But some of it. Yeah, some of well, it. Well, dude, if that shit's real, dude, Trump is going to be the most fucking popular son of a bitch on earth in a while. Right. And dude, that would bode well for you. Do you like the name or the word I used, bode? Bode. You know what? Bode just isn't used enough. It's so, a very underused word. Very <laughs> underused. I have to tell you, I use it all the time, you know. Practically no one used it until I started using it. Now everyone uses it. It's like I try to do Trump and I come out mod. <laughs> should we, we should do the theme song. Dude, this picture of you here uh, makes you look almost um, Dennis, uh, what's his name, mixed with a little bit of uh, uh, what's his name. You know, the guy that stabbed him in casino, Pesci. You look a oh, little... Oh, Pesci, you fucking fuck you. <laughs> you look a little like you Pesci. You fucking fuck. I'll drop a bomb on your fucking head, you fucking moron. Yeah, he was... Uh, yeah, Pesci's great. Who else can you do? Uh, I can do... I can do Bill Clinton. Hi, how you doing there, Brad? Good to see you. Hi. <laughs> I just love how his voice is trying to get you. Well, he's you know? he's been with Hillary his whole life. That's right. That's right. Hey, and, and, and you know, see you. that's why he's all up into you know a little bit of a pervy. No wonder he was getting his dip wicked or wick <laughs> dipped or whatever you call it, dude. That's that's why he was doing it with old what's his name? What's her name? Monica. Lewinsky. Yeah, Lewinsky. Lewinsky. Dude, they she straight up said, "Here, look at my dress. That's his jizz." <laughs> and they're like, "What?" Oh yeah, yeah. That's his jizz. Why would the president's jizz be on my dress? Like, dude, I did not have sexual relations I did with not. that woman. Yeah. I like the way. What's he was... the jizz on the dress? Right. Oh wait a minute, is that blow my jo- jizz? Blowjob isn't sexual. Does not count. How did that happen? Well, you know, she came in the office and I could see her thong. No, I mean seriously. How, how did he get caught? How did that happen? I don't oh, remember. Linda, um, Monica Lewinsky had told her friend Linda Tripp, and Linda Tripp reported it, and that started the whole But did, why wouldn't thing. Monica just deny it and everybody fire Linda Tripp? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> like, I always wonder, like, dude, if you're the motherfucking president and you can't keep a fucking secret, like, when you got your dick sucked. Right. You're not a very You're not smart doing president. your job. Yeah, like, God damn, dude. <laughs> you're, you're in charge of our fucking national secrets. <laughs> Christ almighty. <laughs> That's great. It's true. Hey, and by the way, feel free to grab a pen and take it out. Yeah, take all the jokes I do. Right. Because I'm not using them. Just write them down. Well, you can at least make money with them. Right. right. Dude, I guarantee you, like one time someone dared me to be a stand up comic. It's it's tough. I did it. Were you there? That's where I met you. I did 20 minutes. Now, again, 20 minutes. That's amazing. First time. Looking back, I got to critique myself honestly because I'm an honest fella. (laughs) It seemed that way. Well, well, looking back, I critique myself, you know, could have been way better, uh, wasted a lot of time, belabored some things, belabored some things, um, but for the first time, pretty good. That's um, amazing. Yeah, but but a professional would take my material of 20 minutes and probably make it six. Yeah, exactly. And it would have been fucking hilarious because the material, although it's juvenile, but I'm juvenile. I think it's funny. The material was unbelievable. Like I, I like. For, I think the first thing I opened up is listen. Number one, let me introduce myself. My name's Brad Lee. Got to take a little break in between. Okay, it's not Bradley. That's the motherfucker at the tennis club trying to teach you to play tennis. I'm Brad Lee. Lee. Got to put a little break in between. Now, see, why'd you say that again? See what I'm saying? Like I kept, yeah. I kept belaboring it because you know I, I'm not didn't a, have any material. <laughs> yeah, so so you got to put Bradley like therapist, right? If you didn't put a break there, you'd be the rapist. So you don't want to break in that one, but mine you do. <laughs> now if you if and you, that was your bit, yeah, and if that you, was a good bit. And if, and and just out of curiosity, anybody here can see my balls. Anybody see balls? And I'll look down, like it outline even. Anybody see balls? No, I think that's funny. Why? Just the word balls is fucking hilarious. There's someone in their truck right now laughing. Right. So, so, so I'm thinking in my head that, 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 
<laughs> this is going to be hilarious, but it's not. And so, but the but the premises were like, dude, somebody, a real comedian. I, I keep thinking of you as a comedian, not an actor. Why? Because you're well, fucking I, funny. Right. But a comedian would take this and fucking run with the material. Your balls. Like, there's not a good looking set of nuts on planet Earth. Like, dude, there's no such thing as good looking balls. I swear to you. You take Brad Pitt. And the women are all like nodding. They were. And, yeah. And it's like, you take Brad Pitt it's and Danny ugly. DeVito next to each other, go down to their balls. Same. <laughs> like that's Except it's I'm, low hangers yeah. or high hangers. Or, you know. And I'm like, and I'm like, dude, I'm not against balls. You know, it, 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 I'm not against balls, but, but like, that um, is a funny premise. It's a yeah. great premise. But I'm just wondering like who associated courage with balls? Like, right. like what? I don't understand. Like, like to me, it's like fucking, you know, you want to be courageous. There's something else. Like I, I went to douches like douche. Now that's fucking something we can appreciate. Right. You know, but, but anyway, so it went on for about 20 minutes. I kept belaboring it, but it was, was that here? Like, was it? Yeah. I got a video of it, but it was good, dude. But again, I just keep thinking, oh yeah, he ain't a fucking comedian. He's an actor. <laughs> now I wanted to be an actor growing up. I got a starring role in a movie once. Producer's son, which by the way, his name's Mark Rydell. The? Yeah. Wow. He did on Golden Pond. Yeah. Um, and he had a son named Chris Rydell. And we did a movie called... In- I remember him. He kind of had an accent like this. He was... You know, Mark Rydell. I never he- met Mark. Oh, okay. I met his son because he took my part, basically. And then Ken Keto, who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's oh, Nest. Ken Kesey. Ken Kesey and Don Cato. Ken Kesey and Don Cato were the writers. Don Cato lived in Oregon. So did Ken Kesey, for that matter. Um, so, obviously, One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest was big. So, like, th- they, they were so upset that this dude took my part that they wrote me a part in the movie. And the movie became a dream sequence. So, I stayed in the movie. And I went to Oak Harbor, Washington to film it. But it was a disaster. And it came out. And I fucking finally tracked what it. What movie down. is it? It's co- it was called Indian Summer. But then, it was, yeah. but then it was changed to Dixie Lanes. Oh. So, now, if you wanted to see it, it would be called Dixie Lanes. And it's not a very good movie. Um but but they shut down production. It was a mess, right? But that was my first entry into the movie business, or big one, I should say. Like, ooh, I had the starring role. Yeah. And then three days before production, I get a call, and they're basically giving my part to this kid, Chris, which was Mark's son, because he got out of a drug rehab successfully. <laughs> and I'm like... He graduated. Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And so they it delayed filming because they had to write some new shit they had to get a prosthetics guy to come in and start making up hoyt axton was my dad in the movie but now he's my granddad hoyt axton. he died bush anyway this this podcast isn't about me no even though listen enough about me what do y'all think about me but uh, it's the trump cast but i was going to be an actor and the reason i gave up is because dude i went to la and it just dude i didn't oh, it's wa- I, I didn't want to be broke yeah like and I the other thing is, up. and the other thing is, one of the reasons I do what I do is, and not I'm not in L.A. or not in New York. Like going to auditions is like the biggest waste of time. But you're doing that. I'm, I'm getting asked. Like the last four films I've done, I didn't have to audition. I've was like asked to be in, and usually it's just Trump, so it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to ask. So, so because right now it's like, are you transitioning to where shit you was going to be an actor, but you might make millions being a Trump guy? Yeah, yeah, I just did the um, I did the Good Fight on CBS, and I did have to audition, but it was a tape, and I was already in makeup and hair because I was shooting the cameos that day. So I sh- shot it and sent it off, and uh, my agents called me and said got it so then they flew me to new york and i shot a you know was there for a couple of days and i got to work on a series which is which is great i mean any way in is a way in have you ever got to meet trump Um, hey by the way well i did his birthday birthday. forgot to be dropping bombs that's a bomb that that means bomb squad should listen up you just said it any way in any way in is a way in yeah any way in that's what people don't understand about anything when they really want something any way in is a way in I've had people I'm like, well, go get a job over doing that. I'm not doing that. It's like, oh, you're too good to do that? Like, that's what leads to that. Right. But nobody wants to do that. Right. Everyone wants to be the movie star. That's why I quit. It's like, dude, I want to be the fucking guy on the magazine. Right. And all the girls are screaming over. Or fuck it. Right. Well, you and know, it doesn't thing, work that way. Well, there's this, there's this, and I'm sure you have this, there's this romanticism around being an actor. Like, I'm going to be James Dean and I'm going to do 
go to New York and work off off Broadway, then off Broadway, and then on Broadway, and then I'm going to get a film, and I'm going to, and it's going to be like this. It's like it ain't like that. It ain't like that. And and this this thinking like what comes over the transom. That's not how this business works anymore. It's totally different, and it really was never that way. You're in a. This is a sales business. You're in sales. And you have to every day, like how many how many people do I want to reach today? How many people do I want to follow up with? How many people do I want to? How many bookings do I need to make the money that I want to make? If I'm doing a corporate event and they're whatever X amount of dollars, like how many of those do I need to book? How many corporate clients should I be reaching out to? What's my target market? Now that I'm doing Trump and you know major clients may not want him because it's, there's a sensitivity issue, do I need to move on to a new character? So it's always moving around like how can I, like for me, as soon as the pandemic hit and I came off the road with my corporate clients, I said, you know, I can do the same thing. I can do it in a Zoom call. I can do it in a webinar. I'll change the material. Obviously, it'll be shorter. I can work with you. We can still do content, and I can still do info infotainment, but we'll just change it so it works in this format. You know, 30 minutes on stage now becomes 15 minutes on a Zoom call. You know, but you have and, to keep and, working and keep adapting. You know, this is, this is life how it is. It's life post 9-11. It's life post the downturn from the housing crisis and now it's life post or in the middle of the pandemic you either adapt or you're out well that's another bomb dizzle the line i want to follow is you were you grew up in philadelphia mm -hmm. you went to college you took the, the things and then at some point in time, you, you, you know, you're done. And now all you're doing is auditioning and what waiting tables. Like, what do you do? Yeah, I was, I was waiting tables. I was cleaning offices, at but night, you weren't an impressionist. So. No, I was always an impressionist. I was doing impressions since I was five. Okay. So yeah. I was going to try and figure out where, at what time did you realize you can do impressions? When I was a kid, I had a speech impediment. Um, uh, and basically tongue placement was the issue. I thought, kind of sounded like, like, like Elmer Fudd, like, like this. Everything was like this. And I couldn't pronounce the word properly. So, um, but when I did the voices, I do now right here in our shoe. The fabulous Garbaccio brothers or Girl Scout Troop 625 is in the audience. Girls, stand up and show us your cookies. So I would do, I would watch. With, with no impediment. With no impediment. Impediment free. And Isn't my, that weird? Yeah. It's, well, I later learned why. Um, the way your brain, there's voluntary speech and there's involuntary speech. And the voluntary speech is what we're doing right now. We're talking. Yeah, because if you can't hear yourself talk. And that's the way you're built. Because if you did, you'd drive yourself crazy. Because you could hear yourself all the time. Um, but when you create speech, it shifts to another part of your brain. And then that way you can m adjust and modulate the way you speak. You can't do it. It's almost like um, th the way you people say you have like that southern accent. You may not be able to hear it. A lot of people can't hear the way they talk. Um, but when you're an impressionist or an impressionist, this is one thing I've commonly found among impressionists, impersonators, and musicians. They can hear themselves. They can modulate it and they can change it. They can switch that part of their brain and they can go, oh, I'm too high. I'm too low. I'm, I'm too SP. I'm too this. I'm too that. Uh, most people, and, and pretty much everyone can do it. It's just, it's like anything else. It's an acquired skill. You have to take the time to be able to change your voice or change your, you know, your, your structure of the way you pronounce a word like Dr. Evil or someone, you know, okay, Scott, sure, sure, sure. You know, it's all those different things. One of the things that I benefited from 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 eight years of speech therapy was learning vocal production where where your sound is the uh, vocal mask where you produce sounds all those different things and we were able to get over the um, impediment and then I started auditioning in New York and for I, acting jobs for acting jobs and I remember saying I'll be home later and the director went whoa whoa whoa, whoa. he goes say that again I said home and they said, e you're either from Philadelphia or Baltimore. I don't really care which one, but if you want to be an actor in New York, you better get rid of that regionalism. So then I went back, did two uh, sessions of accent reduction, which I still have because that's the 
Joe Pesci kind of thing you hear, that Northeastern thing. So I have to be careful about um, certain words. I can't say them because my Philly accent will pop through, which are usually home, alone, phone, hoogie, things like that. That it's usually apparent. And if I'm not on top of it when I say it, it'll come out like, where is he from? But Trump sounds a little like that. Oh, yeah. Well, Trump is from Queens, New York. He um, also, the whole New York area. Uh, there's two people that I use to do the Trump voice. I use Groucho Marx and I use um, Christopher Walken. They're the component voices that I use. So, Can you do Walken? Yeah, of course, because Walken is from Queens. And when you listen to Walken, he does the whole staccato thing, right? Brad. So when you convert that to Trump, you get the staccato that he has. And then if you take someone like <laughs> Groucho Marx, if you, you know Groucho. Oh, yeah. All right, so Groucho used to do, I'll use the song. Is he the, I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. So Groucho used to sing in the act. So we go, hello, I must be going. I came to say I cannot stay. I must be going. I'm glad I came, but all the same, I must be going. La la. So if you hear in Groucho's voice that sing songy part, that's Trump because when Trump speaks, he goes up and down and. All over the place. When it, it's really, it's sad. It's sad. I have to tell you. So those are the components I use in his his voice. Now you were uh, maybe we were talking before. Or did we already mentioned it on mic where someone like, he'll call you at one in the morning. And talk. Yeah, a number of people have told me this that he will call once he meets you and if he likes you, um, he'll call you and at, at very odd times and I'll keep you on the phone for two hours. I don't want to mention who it sure. was. I don't want to out that person, but very well-known sports figure, but he'll just talk. He'll just talk for nonstop two hours. And it's, it was so kind of like a well, not a well-kept secret, but certain people knew about it, that a showrunner who had two successful shows on, um, on television called me and was, we were trying to develop a show around it about him. Just late night, late night calls with Trump. <laughs> That's another thing I did a long time ago. I can't remember how long ago it was. I, I tried to audition for the apprentice. Oh, wow. When it first came out. I was like, Oh, I want to do it. And I, got everybody it. wanted to do well, that. Well, I had, I had a record. So I, so they wouldn't, they didn't clear me on a personal background. And I basically, cause they really wanted me. And, and, and I basically said, well, just tell Donald that like, you know, this guy's, it, it'll boil down from the one from jail and the one from Yale. Oh, and man. I, yeah. Like, and it was like, um, oh, that's a great selling point. Yeah. Well, he it, turned his life around. It didn't work because they didn't cast me. They didn't, I, I didn't realize, you know, it's, you're not an actor, but as a contestant, they cast you. Yeah. So they didn't cast me because of that. But uh, I fucking wanted to, man. Who knows, dude? But that's when that's when I think Trump's the funniest. You're fired. You're fired. Right. And I just love when he would give the instructions because a lot of times he's like, blue team, green team, today you're selling lemonade. You can't get any more basic than that. Am I right? Am I right? You seem very happy about this. The ladies seem very happy. Guys, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> That's oh, like good. Like, dude, how, how, can you teach someone to do it, or do they just have it or not? No, I think you can teach somebody. The teach thing me. About I want to do it. I think I've got mod. I, no, there's I, I just gotta so get it down. many. There's so many components to it. Like, because if you really listen to them, every now and then you'll hear the New York accent, like on every fifth and seventh word. You know, because it's back in New York, you'll hear his. It's it's so weird. There's so many different components to his voice it's really tough Dude. but if you can if you can just get the if you can do walking as a baseline then you can build with trump because well, one of the things he does is he likes to over enunciate certain words but not all of them because sometimes you don't have to <laughs> see like when you said sometimes the the, the bass change yeah, like, it's, yeah and like, it speeds up and slows down it's yeah. like you're like oh my god you need like a rule book but to dude, do wa this walking, guy walking is like um wow yeah I, wa Brad. I i walked around for 10 years with this in my ass <laughs> like 
like I don't I don't know how to do it. But it's close. have you had Kevin Pollack on this show? No. Oh, because his greatest. I, I, I'm assuming it's true, but he was talking about how he um, gave. They were at a party, a Hollywood party, and they were getting their cars, and the valets are bringing the cars up, and Walken didn't have a ride. So they're walking over to Kevin Pollock's car and he has a remote starter and <laughs> remote starts the car. And supposedly Walken was like, wow, your car, it's alive. You know, it's just the funniest story. I think it, I think a Walken impression is probably the, the best that you can nail. In other words, you either sound like him or you don't. Like clearly I sound like him, but I don't. You sound dead balls accurate to old Walken. What's another one that your balls accurate on? I would say anything that Mike Myers does. Mike Myers, your balls accurate. Yeah. Uh, who and I've I? been working, and I've um, you know, like there's certain ones. Would that, you Would you do a cameo for Mike Myers too? Oh my God! Yeah. Do you have to pay? Oh, them I've anything? done them. No, no, because it's we're not saying it's Austin Powers necessarily. You're saying it's parody. Yeah, it's parody. Baby. How do they find John Cameo? You just put in my name or. John. Currently, I'm currently I'm number one in politics. You can't put Trump. I think he can put Trump. I'm under. There's a couple of guys under Trump. I'm one of them, but not everybody comes up. There's numerous Trump impersonators on there. Very few do what I do because I do it on a White House press room set. I do lighting. I do pro sound. It's it's a little different than being in your backyard going, yeah, it's a, you know. Well, well, not only that. Uh, you know, you're the one that everybody's seeing on the social media. Right. I'll tell you, that's how I saw you. I was laughing my ass off. I, I think you, like, do you write that? Yeah, I wrote that. It, I wrote that out. Sometimes I'll just, um, the one I recently posted, um, I, I had an idea and I watched the timer and I did it. I kept it under two minutes. It was on testing. It was on, you know, you're not everyone. Testing's not that great. It's not that great. It's not for everybody. I do it because I have to. But you know what I mean? Because the more you test, the more people are going to be sick. And what, you don't want testing. You know, so that. What about vaccinations? Vaccinations? I'm not crazy about those either. Because you have to take your jacket off. And I don't do that. I don't take my shirt off. I mean, I sleep in the suit. So. Not only that. Uh. Uh. Some people won't want to take them. They won't. A lot. 40, 40% of the people don't want the vaccination. They're called anti vaxxers. They're called anti vaxxers. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's that ending, dude. Uh, it's fucking hilarious. Like yeah. You can see the wheels turning in his head sometimes because, like, if somebody would ask him a question, and he is amazing because he can really come up with something in a split second but you can tell when he doesn't have an answer because they go you ready you ready okay you ready calm down are you ready and that thing in those in those four seconds he's coming up with an answer and then he has something and he just boom he just shoots it out what would when people kept saying because i didn't see the video of where he supposedly said you know drink disinfectant no i haven't i have the verbatim i took the i actually did did a transcript he He said basically they were talking about household cleaning items and then he came up and then they said you know he said, so, and you you guys are looking into some other stuff, right? And the disinfectants, we could maybe take the disinfectants and we could maybe put those put those in, right? We could do that. And, and the light, the light, if we can get the light up inside, you know what I mean? The UV light, the UV light. You know? Why does he repeat everything? I, it's, it's actually a, um, it's a thing that a lot of leaders do. They repeat it just it just drives it into your skull when something's repeated over and over again. But the disinfectant line, it really, it really was funny. And I was like, I need to know this verbatim. So I got the transcript and I had to read it. And so I knew exactly what it was because it's, it's really funny. It's, it's hilarious. And the light, the light, the UV light, a lot of people, right? Right. You, right? You're doing, you're working on that. You said you're working on that. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you guys want to follow him on Instagram, go to at Johnny D23, just so you know, because it's not John D. Domenico. His name is John D. D. I. John D. Domenico. Is that, that sounds Italian. It's Italian, yeah. I was just on the uh, Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy yesterday on their podcast. Yeah. Yeah. 
So. Here in town? No, no, they're in DC, but you, we just did a Zoom did a Zoom call. Oh, okay. So I'm very well, proud of my Italian heritage. In person's better, no? No, uh, in, ten times better. Everyone's having like technical issues. One of the interviewers was on their phone, and it was you know this is this is it. Like you know what I mean? It makes such a difference to Big be difference. in studio. And it's stupid. Yeah. I told him. I said no more. Uh, no more uh, Zoom calls. Yeah, like again, if I could actually get the Trump on here, I'd do a fucking Zoom if I had to. But like, unless you're Trump, <laughs> I, I want you in the studio. Right. Well, I've done only two or three, but like, crime you had a and, doctor on, right? And doctor, yeah. But yeah. dude, like, it was well. That was the guy that like freaking kept getting deleted. Yeah. So I wanted to get him on no matter what. But dude, it's the it's the marbled voice every you know. Yeah, the five packets. Minutes. Yeah, the packets don't drive all the way through. And- or right when you get to a good point. You know, they'll be like, you know, and then what happened? Well, then when she walked in the door and then I, I looked over and she <laughs> And then you come back, wrecked him, damn near killed him. <laughs> I get that. That's one of my you know, favorites. Uh, that's, that's Jeff's pinky Tuscadero. <laughs> that's Jeff's Groucho Marx. Oh, my God. Do you remember oh, Columbo? That was like one of my early ones. Sure. Folks, I hate to bother you. I was in here before and I'm a little confused. Is it okay if I park my car out front? Dude, Just how do you get the it. eyeball? Well, you, you you have to... Yeah, but you're going to make it stick that way. I, yeah, I, I know. Sometimes when I have to do them for like 30 minutes, I can feel my eye, that little cord in the back getting... It's about to pull out. Who do you think is the best impressionist in the world that you've like looked at growing up? Oh, growing up? I like think, Rich um, Little is the only one I remember. No, Frank Gorshin was pretty See, who amazing. Who the fuck is Frank Gorshin? Frank Gorshin was the uh, the Riddler. And he was an amazing impressionist. The person that he I... He walked in the door, I wouldn't know who you're talking about. Well, he'd be dead, so it'd be unusual yeah, but no, no, Nobody in. knows Frank Gorshin. Unless a lot you're, of people, a lot of actors, if, a lot of actors know who he is, a lot of performers. A, if you're an yeah. enthusiast, if you're a purist, yeah. if you're a real hepcat. <laughs> you're a hepcat, daddy yeah, like Frank. no. I mean, I watched. You know, growing up, there were a number of guys. There was like Fred Travelina who sang, and there was um, Fred Travelina. Like, didn't he, was a he in here the other day? No. Yeah, he was. Fred Travelina. He'd be about seventy now, I guess. Yeah, Fred Travelina. The impressionist. Yeah. Wow. Well, he wasn't really an impressionist, was he? Impressionist singer. Singer. Uh, Same impressionist. Well, but the guy who had the, the second album, first album I bought was George Carlin, which had nothing to do with impressions. But the second album I bought, I was a kid. It was um, David Fry. You sound kind of like Carlin. Oh, really? That's a high compliment. Um, uh, it was called David Fry Nixon: A Four Year Fantasy, and on it, it's a it's a narratively structured album where he does forty different voices. And obviously Nixon was the main one, but he did, you know, he did Brando, he did The Godfather, all these great characters from like 1974. And that was a huge, I, I must have listened to that album a thousand times and learned all those voices, the Nixon voice and Hubert Humphrey and all these different things. And it was great because it was structured as a narrative story. It wasn't like, and now I'm going to do John Wayne. All right, Pilgrim. You know, was that a lot of the impressionists, the way they operated, I, I was like, <laughs> but with this, it was more of a story, which I liked. And that Carlin album was Take Off and Put Ons, which was his only sketch album. So those two things really affected me because it was all about structure and not just doing the voice, but doing the voice within context of a story, which makes it a little more interesting and it gives it, makes you drive through it a little more as opposed to just doing a one-off on a voice. How you would know? you, how would you pick them? How would I pick? Yeah. Like a voice. Like I always want to do the most recognizable. Like if I could pick, I'd do Trump. Right. I'd do, I'd do um, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino. Yeah. If you get him down, great voice. if you get him down like Pat, like yeah. everybody wants to hear a Pacino. Um, I know. loved him in uh, in uh, Devil's Advocate. I have to be loud to do his voice, but it but it was the, God is an absentee landlord. He's got that big thing going on. Yeah, because she's got a big ass. <laughs> what 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 was that? What one? That was from Heat. That was from the what, end of what, Heat. What, who, what, what was his name in, um, God damn it, what's that movie? He played basically the devil. 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, the, what? The devil's advocate. Yeah, devil's advocate. Yeah, he does a whole thing about guy. Why you're hopping from one foot to the other? He's laughing his ass off. <laughs> that whole thing is just so big. Everything is over the top. You know, and the way he finishes a sentence <laughs> kind of just tightens his voice up. Uh, it's a you, very interesting. You know who just took a shit that I, I thought was iconic actor, but now you just he ruined it by the movies he's doing lately? Adam Sandler? No. <laughs> De Niro. I said who was a pinnacle actor. Like yeah. you think Adam Sandler was a fucking pinnacle, <laughs> pinnacle actor? <laughs> Like, dude, to me, Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro. Like, these are like, holy oh, they're, yeah, they're, shit. They're, they're it. They're the ones. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins. Like, there's, like, dude, if I was going to be an actor, I want to be this good. You know, uh, you know, Ron Howard wouldn't be in that lineup. Neither would fucking Adam Sandler. Although, they're not bad. Right. But, like, Robert De Niro, bro. But now I see him in the dumbest of movies. Like, and, and, he's, and he's playing just... They're not funny parts. They're not. He's I think, trying to be funny, but he's. It's almost like, dude, are you a B-roll actor now? But you're just so big of a name, you, no one recognizes that. Or what's going on with De Niro? I think he's just being offered so much money. You know, to is, be in is, is it because he was talking shit about Trump? Oh, I don't think it's. I think you know, early on, he really was so. He was so particular about the roles he played. It was for, I mean, it, he wouldn't even work for years because he was looking for that next role, the deer hunter, Godfather 2, these, you know, he was so specific. And then I think at a certain point, he was like, why am I being so particular? You know, that's what it seems to me. I can't, you know, I can't speculate what he's thinking, but I, he's getting offered a lot more money and it seems like he's turning films over a lot faster. I also don't think there's films like The Deer Hunter and Taxi Driver and all those films he cut his teeth on um, coming out anymore. It's a totally different audience. That's true. Do you like Trump? I think he's fascinating. I think the guy is absolutely fascinating. But, but you're, but you're kind of Hollywood. So it's like, you know, actor... Do you like Trump? Because most Hollywood, most actors, they I don't like Trump. Here's the, you know, you have to look at, look, the fact of the matter is, he's the president. So look at what he brings to the table. This unbelievable, unrelenting energy. You know, you may not like what he does, but you got to admire how this guy has this, he's just nonstop. He, whatever his position is, he is locked in. You know, which is good and bad, but it he really just locks in. And I'm just amazed, like, on the election night, he went to five cities. This guy went to five just cities campaign. to campaign. But the, that in itself, he, like, he's he gets so much, he, you know, he's obviously missing the, the, um, the rallies because he derives so much energy from that. You know, I just find him really fascinating. So I, you're also being politically correct, I take it. A well, no, bit. no, here's why. Because I work for, you know, I was on Conan 50 times and I was on Fox 50 times. My political opinion is irrelevant. True. I, and plus, plus, if you piss off the wrong people, then you lose jobs for no well, reason. Well, I don't, you, there's no, here's my thing. I'm an entertainer. I'm an old school entertainer. I want to entertain the entire audience. I don't want to alienate anybody. Someone's coming to see me perform. I want to make sure everyone's entertained. And one of the things I always say about, you know, Bal and I've met Alec Baldwin. and um, So have I, coincidentally. Yeah, I did a show with him a few months ago. But here's the thing. Like, I think, and this is my opinion as an actor, I think his dislike for Trump corrupts his performance when he does tony bennett have you seen him do tony bennett he's hilarious he loves tony bennett and you obviously get the sense that he loves him when he does trump you can tell he hates trump so i think that comes through and i f think that affects the performance when i was doing uh, the show at the sls which is now back to being the sahara when i was doing uh, totally outrageous there and i was playing trump i would have after the show i did like a 12 minute part of the show and I finished with the song I'd have people come up to me after the show who were pro-Trump they'd say we're from wherever Minneapolis Arkansas whatever we love Trump we're big pro-Trumpers and we thought you were hilarious and then 
two seconds later, the next group comes up and says, you know, we're from we're from wherever. We're from New York and we cannot stand Trump. And that was hilarious. I've entertained both of those people without insulting either one. So there's a middle ground to be able to perform him, to do it authentically. And there's a lot of humor in him. You know, there's just a lot of humor just in the way he speaks. So if you can get that and make people laugh at that as opposed to policies and things you dislike about him, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to make people laugh. You know, I want to make the entire audience laugh. That's my thing. Well, there's no better president to do that then. Yeah. (laughs) Because, because I mean, again, he does say everything twice. He, it's so it's you know this is my water it's it's it, you know i've got the best water the best water you know the like, best water. i wonder why he does that that's like a it's almost like an insecurity it is it is fascinating because they mentioned i remember even the winery we have the largest winery in virginia trump wine it's fantastic wine it's like but it's not the large i mean you know people like fact check it it's not the largest it's but that that is his go-to it is the best it is the i've i've said this in other other interviews remember fast times at ridgemont high remember rat was telling the other guy how to date the girl and he says no matter where you are it's the greatest place place ever so you can i've seen so much footage of trump but he'll be at an event and he'll say isn't this great isn't this great isn't this party great? Isn't this event great? Is and it's it's rat. It's just you know he went to collegiate marble um, church. The guy who wrote Power of Positive Thinking, that was his book. He read that book, and it's almost like he inculcated that book in a way that it comes out like supercharged with everything. Everything's fantastic. We've got the, you know whatever it is, it's the absolute best. We've got the largest army in the world. We've got the best people on this. The absolute, incre- it's always the absolute best. It's not like we're working on it. No, 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 no. It's the best. It's the best. It's going to be incredible. Believe me, believe me. This thing's going to go away. This whole Wang Chung Kung Flu virus, it's going to go away. It's going to be really incredible. Just believe me. And it's like, that's what, if you just, <laughs> it's like, you just you know, he's going to move a rock with his personality. I'm going to ask you when we get off. Whether you like it or not, because your your answer was interesting and very politically correct. You said, "Oh, he's fucking interesting, interesting guy, fascinating, fascinating, I said fascinating." Yeah, but most of the people were like, nah, "I don't really like him," or you know, "I'm not, I don't like his behavior." But you know, you gave a very perfect political answer, so that means uh, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> now, me, it's I always just say, "Look, when it comes to Trump, I liked Trump for one reason: he wasn't a politician." End of story. Oh, that I agree with. And I also agree that the Democrats and the Republicans failed us. So many things were screwed up. And he's a disruptor. We're in a That's it. We're in a part of history where disruptors are changing. Uber, Lyft, him. You know, that is the time for it. That's the only only reason Like I'm like, okay, cool. Because otherwise it would have been Hillary. Well, she's proven, number one, to... To be a politician. Right. And, 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 a politician and a politician. One. And a crooked one if the media's right. Because, dude, they were protecting her and still shit came out. So if, if that's true, because you know what it boils down to, dude? That's why I don't get too political. People that love Trump. Oh, he's killing it. You don't know what the fuck he's doing. You're, 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 you're seeing it on the news. Right. Okay. You know, when this whole pandemic came out, I found out I had so many friends with fucking high level friends at the White House. They, <laughs> they just said, boy, me. there's a lot of you. I know. I had like, oh, my God, dude, I'm surrounded by everybody with friends and FBI. Like, holy shit. Like my brother, high level at the White House, just sent me this martial laws coming. It's like, oh, shit. I had people. I know, all this stuff is hilarious. I had no hey, idea. Just on the key, QT, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but but like it's like when when all that shit started, it's like I don't even know where I was going with that. But fuck. No, everyone thinks they know, and oh, I, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, I that, hear what you're saying. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Everybody thinks they know, and it's like, dude, we don't know. You don't we don't know. know. And so you when it know. goes when it comes to Trump, like my daughter hates him. Like that's just to me ignorance. Like when I said my daughter's not that bright, she's smart in a lot of ways, but that's just ignorance to me. Like, you're going to hate this person so much when you have no fucking clue of what you believe is true. Right. And I also think, you know, one of the things about, and I've been following Trump for many, many years. I've read every book. And this goes back to everything he's 
ever done. He needs a villain. He needs a villain, and it's very important. He's always in a fight with someone, even if it's the most mundane, stupid thing, like with Rosie O'Donnell. He soaked that. I mean, he stretched that out for seven years. And the thing is, like, that's his thing. He always has to have a villain, always has to have a villain, always has to point to somebody else. That, that's, how he, that's how he works. Now, your daughter disliking him, he loves that. Because yeah, she's she, still talking about him, but she, but, but she, I, we had to argue for a, a year because I'm like, your taxes did lower. Well, blah, 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 blah. your taxes did lower. Like he, he lowered the taxes, and and when someone asked me, I said, dude, if he lowers the taxes like he said he will, I'll fucking like him, right? He's not a politician. Let's give him a chance. Now, if another politician, non-politician, would have ran. You know, maybe I would have liked someone else better, less embarrassing. Right. Because in some times I think, dude, leave it alone. Like, you know, things oh, the, like Rosie. The number one thing I hear from when I do pro-Trump events and people come up to me and I've done GOP events across the country. I've done really, you know, large scale events. The number one thing is stop tweeting. Yeah. Stop tweeting, please. Yeah. They'll come up and we'll do a photo. Mr. President, stop tweeting. You don't. It's really beneath you. Well, not only that, but uh, or, or just and I have to say, I'm number else. one. I'm number one. Why would you want me to stop? This is why I'm here because you love me. They're like, please stop tweeting. <laughs> this is how I won the presidency, right? Yeah, it's the one thing he is like. He's addicted to that. Folks, listen. I can't keep him here all day. I gotta now, go. I if, gotta go. If you want to hire this gentleman, you can go and find him at johnnyd.net, can't they? Or, JohnnyD.net. Which, which you well, find you, is representation. My representation. If you want a cameo, go to uh, cameo.com and put me in. Or if you want to book me for a big event, go to JohnnyD.net. Yeah, and, and the cameo is way cheaper than a booking. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so For like, sure. And you can keep it forever. Yeah, <laughs> and you keep it forever. Not only that, like they're fun as hell and you can get them done immediately. Like yeah. as soon as you put it in, like, you know, you get notified. I know because I got a little stupid invite to be on Cameo. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It's the greatest. It's like, greatest no, thing. like nobody knows who I am, dude. I put my shit at $500 because I don't want to do them. Right. Um, I don't want to do them. I do want to do them. But I don't want to do them. In other words, I'm not going to do them for fucking what I'd have to charge, which is like $5 a shout out and shit. Right. Like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> you know, oh, oh, give me $5. I'll be there all day making 60 bucks. Right. But, but when you start getting up there to a, to a you know, $100, $200, $300, and your popularity's through the roof oh. like yours, you're doing thousands. Yeah. There's certain people who are just killing it on there because it's a great concept it's a great it's a, concept yeah when i saw that I'm and like, they're the Dude. best ones i think they're the best ones hands what, down why are there copycats oh yeah there's other ones that are out there oh. but they have the largest platform i mean you know basically it's a technology company you just have to be able to scale and they are they're really good at what they and, do and they're smooth they're like sm their yeah. reps and everything yeah so yeah. folks if you guys haven't even heard of cameo do me a favor go check out cameo but Cameo.com forward slash Johnny D23. Send out a Trump message. Birthday. Happy Father's Day. Merry Christmas. It's going to be huge. And by the way, no one says Merry Christmas anymore. I mean, I do, but no one else does. Why is that? I don't know. You know, it's sad. It's really sad. But see, we're going to say it again. We're going to say Merry Christmas again. Yeah, but you, you also know? got to see the, 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 how we the how move. We, the move. Yeah. How do you get that down? And the liberals were not even allowed to say happy birthday because they say it's ageist. Can you believe this? But I'm going to keep saying happy birthday. I'm going to keep saying it <laughs> on all of my cameos. I don't care what the Nancy Palooza and crying Chuck Schumer say. I don't care. I'm going to say happy birthday. And the best line of all that I've ever seen him do is, you know, it's from China. It's from China. Dude, that was from hilarious. China. Right. Dude, absolutely not. It's not racist. No, it's not racist. Not at racist all. at all to say China. <laughs> like I said, terrible people, the Chinese. Great takeout. Terrible people. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate you coming by. So I, thank I, you. I, I know that you did it as a favor and uh I didn't I didn't have to pay you a million dollars, but dude, I got a million dollars worth of freaking entertainment and I appreciate you. And keep making them damn videos. Folks, go support this gentleman at Johnny D. 23 on Instagram. Hit him up. Show him what the bomb squad's all, bomb squad's all about. Bomb squad. And as usual, until next time, keep it real.